Hey, you there. You know what time it is? I guess it's time for the maze TBR video. Not that I've done TBR videos in a while, but I have over on TikTok. So for a change, we're gonna try and do one here. Hi guys, it's Tiffy. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I filmed well, the last one you guys would have seen would have been my 48 hour readathon video. So that was fun. Anyway, we are going to be talking about my big TR and one of the books that I don't have yet, but I should be getting hopefully on Monday. But I will insert a picture at the end since I don't physically have that book yet. But I'm all excited overall but I will pull it up on my iPad so I can give a description on that book as well as long as I can find my Goodreads on here oh there it is <laughs> like as long as I can find Goodreads she's fine she's fine maybe <laughs> oh dear goodness Okay, got it pulled up. Ooh, Ooh maybe. All right, I'm gonna talk about a couple of books that I'm in the middle of that I really need to finish, and hopefully pushing it into May will be the time because one of them is Jade City by Fonda Lee. Family is duty, magic is power, honor is everything. For centuries, an honorable green bone warriors have used magical jade to enchant their abilities and defend the island of Kion from forging innovation. Now, war is over, and a new generation of vies of control of Kion's bustling capital city. Four siblings of the powerful call family must prepare for battle and the fragile peace between the clans is about to break now that's all i really know so far about this one i'm only on like chapter four of it so far and from what i've read slash listened to i really enjoy it i just huh, is a chunky boy so we definitely need to finish it so hopefully next month is the month because I have some time off and we're going to hopefully, if we're feeling up to it, fly through some books. All right, so this next one, ugh, don't come at me. I've been reading it for a little while and I do like it. I believe, okay, I'm on chapter six. I'm a little ways through. I'm on page 70. I just need to pick it up again and that is house of earth and blood a crescent city novel by sarah j mass i don't think i need to explain what this is about because it's been floating around for a while and book two recently came out so i want to read this so i can dive right on into book two so we'll see if this month is the month i finish this and maybe we'll start book two in june <laughs> fingers crossed not making any promises but we're definitely gonna try now i'm gonna talk about a couple of the library holes i have because some i will have to return some i have for a little bit i'm gonna talk about the first two that i have the first one i have is one night that changes changes everything by lauren barnholt she is the author who wrote to a street and right away that I really loved and enjoyed so I want to read more by her and then I get it they're making me do things that are in my notebook all the things I'm afraid of and if I don't they're going to post the notebook online and everyone at school no everyone within an internet connection will all know my secrets 
for a second it feels like my throat swallows up my heart and my breath catches in my chest there's only one thing left to do i put my head into my hands and start to cry and i started a little bit into this tonight's as well and from what i've read uh, i'm into it i just need to get past my page mark number that i like to get past which is 50 and that's when i know i'm uh, really enjoying it like i want to know if she finds her notebook because i'm in the middle of her searching for it right now so hmm, who finds the notebook sounds like a friend first yikes all right and then another one i have i have the uh, the rest of the novels except for six well volumes is the monstrous by sana takdita i think that's who it's by but anyway i have a volume three i need to read through and then i need to read through four and five so i have like two others after this so and they're not very long either it's just time consuming is all it really is but she basically has this monstrous thing come out of her arm and when it's hungry it like technically eats like bad people and it's like really weird and then like shares a connection with her and she's all like looking for her past and why she was left all alone and trying to find her mother's side of the family a little bit so Mika goes on quite an adventure and she meets this Kai who's like kind of sarcastic and he's annoying but he's kind of fun and then she meets this little fox who's a little kid and I love the little fox I cannot think of the fox's name on the top of my head but she likes Mika even though she's a scary creature girl and the little fox is like I'm kind of scared of you but at the same time I will do anything to protect you even though I'm this little kid it, it it's awesome I really like the series so far as if you can tell <laughs> and then since I'm on a Colin Hoover kick I got most of her books but I don't have this one just yet but I got the new book from the library called Layla I don't know a whole lot about it Ooh, but I do like this back part where it says love can haunt or heal I think that's all I really want to know going into this one because I want to go in blind and so far the only uh, Colin Hoover book I've read is it ends with us and I've liked that one so much I went out and found a few more that I didn't already have we don't have an issue we're, we're fine we're fine she says moving on <laughs> all right i'm gonna talk about a few more books that i need to get through that i've i'm in the middle of <laughs> oops this next one i'm in the middle of is one italian summer by rebecca shirley and this is so far incredible i'm just like taking my time really with it but i'm on chapter nine and i'm loving this so far like there's been it has a trigger warning for like a death that happened and the girl is grieving over the death of her mother and she goes to this place in Italy that they talked about going to before her mom got really sick and died and so the daughter ended up going there but there's a little twist and I don't want to give that little twist away but as soon as she sees this twist, she's like, am I hallucinating? What is going on? How is this possible? Why is she here type of thing? So I'll give you a little bit more of a hint of the, that's a little twist, but that's all you're gonna know. But if you wanna know more, I guess you just really need to read One Italian Summer and I highly recommend it. I really do. That was really weird. <laughs> All right, the other one I have been talking about trying to finish for months. It feels like months, it probably is. With me, it probably is. And I'm like nearly there. It's just, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and that is Made in Korea by Sarah Su. 
is about these two kids, uh, our main character, oh, what's her name? It has been a hot minute. Valerie. Valerie runs the AK beauty business in her school, and then this new guy, Wes, moves into town, and he kind of started his own business kind of on accident. And when Valerie finds out, she's ticked off. She's like, uh, excuse you, what do you think you're doing running a business trying to compete with me kind of thing. And it's like a slowly enemies, enemies to lovers. I'm not sure exactly how much farther I have left of the book for them to finally figure out, oh, hey, I really like you. Oh, I really like you too. Let's get together. I, I don't know what that was when we're keeping it in here. That was awesome. Uh, but anyway, he's trying to save up for going to music school, college, because he doesn't want to go to the school his parents picked out. And she's really wanting to go on a trip with her grandmother in the summer. So they both have one goal in mind and not enough time for each other, basically. And so it's a really good so far, obviously, because <laughs> your girl just needs to finish it. And May needs to be the month. <clears throat> All right, the next book I want to try and finish a little bit more into. Don't have a bookmark, so I can't tell you exactly where I'm at. I know I'm not that far, but it is Stillness of Time by J.M. Buckler. It is her second book to a Seeker of Time series. And it's just about a girl named Ilara. She finds a long lost brother because she was adopted. And like I said, she finds her brother whose name is Cyrus. And they slowly figure out that they have these magical powers. And it's really cool. And when they combine themselves together, they're even powerful together than they are alone. Like, one can see better during the day, one can see better at night, and one can, one's faster at night, one's stronger in the day, and they never figured out why until another mysterious guy, Jax, comes down and he kind of like says, Hey, by the way, you're not really from Earth. You're from another planet, but you grew up on Earth, so it's kind of cool. They're like an alien kind of thing, and oh, I need to read more book two to see what happens to my favorite characters, which is Alara and Cyrus. <laughs> they get along for the most part, but every now and again when they butt heads, I'm like, fight round one. I'm just playing. But overall, it is super good. And if you haven't read Seeker of Time series, you might like it. You might enjoy it. If I like it, you might like it. Maybe. Don't hate it until you try it. Alright, the other book I'm currently in the middle of and is also a chunky boy as well. And that is A Den of Vipers by K.A. Knight. And there's four bad guys. There's Ryder, Garrett, Kenzo, and Diesel. I'm not sure which one I like yet and which one I really hate until I get more into it. But we do also have another main character and her name is Roxanne. But she goes by Roxy. And she ends up getting sold to these four criminals because her deadbeat dad we'll put it that way basically sold her because he couldn't find the money to pay these criminals that he took money from i'm assuming that's what he did so they own this girl and i think they're gonna do like all kinds of like odd random stuff to her like girl i'm scared for you but she's also a badass because she even took a bat to some of the guys. I'm not going to say a whole lot from what I've read from it, but I really like it so far. It's also smut. <clears throat> Did I say that loud enough? It, it, it's smut. It's got a little bit of smut from what I've heard. So, um, going into it pretty blind, but like I said from that little description, 
<laughs> yes, please. All right, and towards the end of May, like the day after my birthday, I am going on a little bit of vacation. So I'm taking this uh, book with me. It's short, well, somewhat short, but really not short. The acknowledgement. Okay, it's 358 pages. I don't know if I will finish it on vacation, but I might get a little ways into it. And that is a Bee Tree by Emily Henry. I've read a few books by her so far, and I really wanted to try Beach Read. August Everett is a is an acclaimed author of a literature fiction. January Andrews writes the best-selling romance. When she pins a happily ever after, he kills off his entire cast. They're polar opposites. In fact, the only thing they have in common is that the next three months they're living in neighbor, neighbor her boring beach house. Broke and bogged down with writer's block. Then one hazy evening, one leads to another and they strike a deal to sign to force them out of their creative ruts. August will spend the summer writing something happy. January will pen the great will pen the next great American novel. She'll take him on a field trips worthy of a rom com montage, and he will take her to an interview of surviving members of a backwards death cult. Obviously, everyone will finish a book and no one will fall in love. Really. Now, if that doesn't sound good, I don't know what does. Alright, so this other book that I do not have, I will have to insert a picture here too because it's also kind of blurry on this, but it's called Hellfire and it's by Marilee Promove. Sorry if I butchered your name wrong, but it's this book that's been going around on Instagram. So let's give you a little description on what it's about two immortal creatures one dangerous bargain after death of her mother Aya finds herself stained by more blood than she can hide in the brutal daylight of her home of Kelrosis. she escapes the realm but pays the price giving up her immortality and her powers once a mithra with the light at her fingertips, she becomes a near mortal. Her desperate search for asylum leads her to the doorstop of the only place of her abusive family's reach, a realm that deals in death and darkness unapologetically. Aldra, but nothing in this world is free. And to buy her way into the BDS safety, she's forced to give up the only thing she has left to barter. Her soul in exchange for seven days in the devil's realm. Archo, the ruler of the Nephilim, is eager to dangle his new little pet in front of Merthia, who have caused them once it's stamped on its... Oh, oh, sorry. Who has caused irreparable damage in his life, but doesn't expect the fact that Ia's soul has both of them once it's stamped on his arm. They pull, they, they the pull between them is all consuming. They crave each other, but they crave each other between sharp words and angry changes in an increasingly passionate bond that threats to shatter the delicate balance of everything. Archel and Ira, sorry if I'm pronouncing these wrong, Kalros and Alarja, even life and death. Whew, well, that was a mouthful. All right, you guys, there you have it. Those are all the books I'm hoping to get through in May. Maybe some will be pushed into June. We don't know just yet. But here's to trying and here's to hoping. 
And if you guys are new here, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, which hopefully y'all are. Anyway, I will hopefully see you guys in a new video soon. And I hope you guys are having a good day or night, wherever you are in the world. Until my next one, see you guys.